Okay, folks, it's uh, Tuesday morning, I guess around 9.48. I'm trying to work out repairing what we did yesterday on all the trout we caught and the lures we lost. Um, that's the trailer right there that I've already made up, so I hooked it up there so it doesn't get tangled. And what I started doing is I take and tie one hook first. And I'll show you how to do it in a minute. And I tie all my hooks together. So all I gotta do is pick it up and I have the front line and the front trailer and the back trailer right there. All right, and I have my trailers over here and then I'll feed them on there. And as I make them up, I put them over here. Later on, I'll show you how I, I, I roll them up in, in um, paper towels. It does two things. One, it stops them from getting tangled up. Two, it stops the lures from bleeding into one another. Said so they'll say orange and green. When I give you the colors too, that's that's a, a orange with metal flakes. That's a green with metal flakes. Bright, both of them are bright. I get them over by gusses. There's the hooks over there. I get them over by gusses. Hi, folks. I don't know if you see this, but it doesn't it doesn't get tangled when you pick it up. Just like do it like that, and both the lines come out. Uh, you have one line right here is going to be the front trailer this is going to be the back trailer and if you notice I tied it on the same hook and I feed when I feed my trailer through here this top one it will cover that up so when I take an orange trailer and this is the hardest part feeding this thing through the bottom. I know y'all don't believe that, but I mean, there's, there's a little bitty hole where you gotta get it in. I don't use the needle, so once you get in that little area there, you'll be close. There it goes, it's not in there yet. There it is, see it coming through like that? You pull it all the way through. Keep going. You don't want to cut it when you're doing that. You want to pull it. See how it, see how it buries in there now? That hook is buried in there. And then the trailer, the, the second trailer the line is coming through here straight back. So when you're fighting the fish, you have a straight area you're fighting through there. And then I take the green one, this one here, which is a lot easier because you're feeding it through, uh, through here, through the top part. Like that, pull it through. Again, you don't want to make don't, don't cut go sideways because you it'll slice your lure up. You don't want that to happen. And you take it one, two, three, four. Through it one time, and twice twice to that loop. Big hands, folks, big hands. Try it again. I right, did my little loop once, twice. You hold this little piece right here, the main line too, and you pull it tight. I'm gonna pull it tight, cinch, cinch, cinch it up. Cinch the tag line, so that's tight too. Trim it off, and then you pull it down, and you bury that hook inside that trailer. And you want to make sure your trailer um, tassels are in place. So then you have the, the trailer pre-rigged. These are pre-rigged, so when I go out there, I don't have to fight the waves and everything else. And then I take my green one and hook them up. But the thing I do is I take a piece of paper towel, one little piece, and I thought about this with the hot tamale, to be honest with you, is how I came about this. And uh, I start with the back lure, roll it up a little bit, back trailer, then I put the, the front trailer in there, like that. And it, it keeps them from getting tangled up. 
Also, it keeps them from bleeding into one another. And there it is, folks. That's it. So I, I've got uh, about ten of these I'm going to make now. So when I go out in the field, I don't have the, uh, the hard part of, of tying it with the waves and everything. Um, three, eight ounce, three quarter ounce jig head. You get them at Gus's. Number four, uh, treble hook. You know, and then we use the uh, matrix shad on, on the... Uh, on this here we go right on here and the trailers are, are, are two foot apart I tie my main line on the hook now I do not put a uh, sock or, or a leader on it I just tie it directly to the hook my main line and then my top trailer ties right into here so I hope that helps um, I buy the hooks by hundreds on, on uh, online Amazon uh, I tried to buy the trailers, but they, they, it's too much. They want too much to, uh, to even entertain me uh, buying them. It's a certain amount of money you need to spend. And now I'm using uh, 20 pound tri line big game for the trailers. I find that they don't twist up as much, and uh, if you catch two of them, which we've been doing, you can get them in the boat. You can get one in the boat and then grab the back line and pull the other one in the boat. It doesn't break off. Hope that helps, folks. I roll them up and I put them in individual sandwich bags to stop them from tangling up. And it's, they come out pretty easy. Uh, normally, they don't tangle up. But you just gotta practice. I got seven of them here. I got three of them already in there. So that's ten spares that I have that I can change out in the field. Now all I gotta do is re-rig my rods and I'll be okay. But I put all of them in this big bag, goes in that bag over there. And if big guts know big you knows what I'm talking about when you're in the field trying to tie these things. I punched a bunch of holes in this big bag so I could compress it, get all the air out of it, so it'll fit in my box a lot better. Now to tackle the rods over there and get them back in shape for our next trip. Well, folks, it was a quick three hours spent making up all my, uh, uh, fixing all my rods up and, and also making some uh, spare inventory of. Uh, trailer rigs to make it easier when you try to do it in the boat. If you're looking to get into trolling and you don't have a setup, this is a rod I bought from Gus. It's a Berkeley uh, cherry wood. It's a six foot rod, somewhere in the neighborhood of $25. It's not a very expensive rod, but I'm going to tell you, it caught 45 to 50 percent of the trout Monday with this rod. And I really like the way it feels. We pulled in some doubles. I mean, you know, 33, two and a half, three pound trout doubles. And uh, as far as the reel goes, I mean, if you don't have a, a bait cast, I just recommend you use a bait caster. Um, this one here was like $24 online, 18 ball bearing plus one. Like I said, it handled the fish uh, real well. The drag seemed to be okay. Um, you know, it, it, uh, this this rig, this this reel and this this rod produced some nice trout and it was easy to bite them. I mean it wasn't a big deal. You got big handles on it, you can reel them in. So I suggest you get over to Gus and, and uh, if you're interested in trolling, this is a nice setup. Ask Gus about it. It's a six foot Berkeley cherry wood rod. And the reels, uh, I bought them online. And this is the trailers. This is the green one. This is the orange one I'm always referring to. And then this is the one we put on the uh, one of our three quarter ounce jig head. Well, I'm going to finish up, go inside, get me some cold drink, and see if I can find something to eat. This is the three quarter ounce heads I, I buy. Um, I might have made a mistake. I don't think. No. I get the short shank. I think they sell them in long shank too, but I, I like the short shank. 
and I like a, a, a sturdy hook, a real sturdy hook. And uh, like I said, Gus has this all his place. Um, you can buy them individually, or you can buy them by the pack. I don't know how many this is, but there you go. Three quarter, a five art hook. Yeah, when in doubt, just turn the bag over, gives you all the information. It's three quarter ounce heads, five art hook, and the 25 pack. And it's called Cajun Tackle House. Gus has got them. Get over there, get you a rod, get you a reel. Uh, 20 pound power pro is the main line. That's all I use. And go out there and get you some trout and learn how to do the Lake Peak Troll. Folks, it's a lot cooler working in the house. I'm soaking wet from being out in the garage. But if y'all get a chance, y'all stop by this coming Saturday. We'll be at, um, oh man, I knew I was going to forget the name. Uh, anyway, it's on Gauze Boulevard. We're going to meet at 11 o'clock. A bunch of fishermen are going to be there. And uh, Fatty Seafood, that's it. Fatty Seafood on Gauze Boulevard, 11 o'clock Saturday. We're going to be there and we're going to talk about fishing. We're going to have, I guess, maybe 600 years of fishing experience there probably answer any question you have we're looking for new blood that can add add to the uh, way people catch fish and we're looking for people that want to learn how to fish learn the ins and out anyway if you can if y'all can stop by Saturday 11 a.m. Uh, fatty seafood on Gauze Boulevard